Hi, my name is Jawad Gul and I am Bridge Engineer in Lincoln, Nebraska. In this video, I'll explain the concept of thermal gradient for bridges. More specifically, I'll try to address the following questions. What is a thermal gradient? What is the mechanism that causes the thermal gradient stress? How to compute thermal gradient stress? I will not go into detailed calculations. I have a separate video that shows the detailed calculations of thermal gradient stress for a concrete segmental bridge. Let's get started with something simple. Let's say you have a simply supported beam and sun is shining on top of it. The top surface of the beam would be harder compared to the bottom surface. And this particular type of thermal gradient is called positive thermal gradient. Similarly, if it's snowing out there, the top surface of the beam would be cooler compared to the bottom surface and this particular type of thermal gradient is called negative thermal gradient. In this video I'll talk about the positive thermal gradient only. Once you understand the positive thermal gradient, the negative thermal gradient is very similar. So in the positive thermal gradient, uh, the top surface of the beam is hotter compared to the bottom surface. And if we look at the temperature profile, it's nonlinear with respect to depth, with the maximum temperature at the top that decreases with the depth of the beam. Now, different design codes have simplified this nonlinear temperature profile to either bilinear or trilinear uh, temperature profile, but it is still nonlinear. Now imagine this beam is divided into discrete small layers throughout the depth of the beam. The strain in any layer can be found by multiplying the temperature of that layer with the coefficient of thermal expansion. Or in other words, this temperature profile can be converted into strain profile by multiplying the temperature values with the coefficient of thermal expansion. I'll be using positive sign for the tensile strains and stresses and negative signs for the compressive strains and stresses. Now remember the stress is only produced if thermal strain is constrained by some mechanism and in this particular case the thermal strain is constrained due to its nonlinear nature and I'll explain it in the next few slides. So a simply supported beam can bend, it can expand. The bending of the beam generate a flexural strain profile that is linear with respect to depth of the beam. Expanding of the beam generates an axial stress profile that is generally constant with respect to depth of the beam. We can add these two profiles together. The resulting profile is still linear. However, the thermal strain profile is nonlinear. That beam is not capable of generating, or it cannot allow this strain profile to happen freely, thereby generating a thermal stress profile. Now remember, if the expansion of the beam is constrained, it will generate a compressive stress. That's why. The tensile thermal strain is constrained, it will generate a compressive thermal stress. Now let's discuss this constraint issue a little bit further by considering some hypothetical cases. Let's say if the thermal strain profile looked like this. Beam can easily generate this strain profile just by bending thereby allowing this strain profile to happen freely and in this case no thermal stress will be generated. Similarly, if the thermal strain profile was constant, look like this. This is the general strain profile assumed for calculation of expansion and contraction of the beam due to temperature. So the beam can easily generate this strain profile by simply expanding thereby allowing this strain to happen freely and not generating any thermal stress. Even if the strain profile look like this, it is still linear with respect to depth. So beam can expand and bend at the same time, 
generating this kind of strain profile, thereby allowing this strain to happen freely and not generating any thermal stress. So as long as the thermal strain profile is linear or constant with respect to depth of the beam, it will not generate any thermal stress. However, if the thermal strain profile is nonlinear, beam is not capable of generating that nonlinear strain profile, thereby constraining it and generating the thermal stress profile. Once you have the thermal stress profile, it will also generate a net force on the cross section. And this net force can be obtained by integrating this stress over the cross section of the beam. This force is generally eccentric to the neutral axis of the beam. So if we shift it to the neutral axis, it will be accompanied by a thermal gradient moment. In order for the beam to maintain the equilibrium, it has to generate an equal and opposite force and moment. Let's call this force as FTGR or reactive thermal gradient force and moment as MTGR or reactive thermal gradient moment. These reactive thermal gradient force and moment are equal and opposite to the active thermal gradient force and moment. So in summary, there are three stress profiles generated as a result of thermal gradient. The stress profile due to active thermal gradient, the stress profile due to reactive thermal gradient force, and the stress profile due to reactive thermal gradient moment. The net thermal gradient stress will be the sum of these three stress profiles. So let's say if you want to determine the thermal gradient stress at the top of the beam, it will be the thermal gradient stress due to reactive thermal gradient moment that can be obtained by the flexural formula plus the stress due to reactive thermal gradient force plus the stress due to active thermal gradient. So if we add these three stress values at the top, we get this equation for the thermal gradient stress at the top. So let's look at this equation and see what do we need to compute the thermal gradient stress. We need material properties, that is coefficient of thermal expansion and modulus of elasticity of concrete. We need section property, moment of inertia, distance of neutral axis from the top, and the cross-section area. And the last thing we need is the temperature profile that will also give us the reactive thermal gradient force and moment. Temperature profile for different beams is given in Ashto Bridge Design Specification. Once you have the temperature profile, it can be easily converted into stress profile just by multiplying it with the coefficient of thermal expansion and modulus of elasticity. Once you have the stress profile, you can integrate it over the cross-section to get the active thermal gradient force and moment. And the reactive thermal gradient force and moment are simply equal and opposite to the active thermal gradient force and moment. I have a separate videos that goes into the detailed calculation and show the numerical integration process to compute this active thermal gradient force and moment. Thank you for watching the video. Please post your comments and questions in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe to get updates on newly posted videos.